One, let's go, chap. You don't know and today we are oh you want to make your appearance already and today we are doing a sit down um i am going to add clips in of my labor and delivery i'm going to put it either at the beginning or the end i'm not sure i'm going to go through them all first and see but um my labor and delivery was let me bring you closer Mm. that's better my labor oh and i'm gonna be introducing you to my son i'm a mother of three now guys but um i planned my own oh, it looks crazy i plan to do a um birthing vlog like about a, a labor vlog didn't work out that way um Labour didn't work out the way I thought it was going to work out. So labour was crazy, guys. Like, I'm telling you, I thought I was dead. <laughs> One second. Are you making up some noise? Are you smiling? That's just wind, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so... Oh. Let me sit up. Yeah. So, basically... On the 6th, we went to the fun fair and stuff, me, the kids, Aaron, and I was like dripping. I thought my waters had broke, but they was broke, they broke slowly because from the night before I I like had water, like I released water as well. Um so I just thought labor's gonna come on at some point, but then you're not really supposed to do anything about it. So I was on the phone to my mum and I was just explaining that um I think my waters have been breaking slowly. She's like, oh, you need to call the delivery suite and let them know because you could get infections. So they kind of watch out for that stuff. Um, so I was like, oh, okay. So we'll just chin at the fun fair. See, I can't go on nothing. Um, and then call them. They're like, oh yeah, you need to come in because we need to check if your water's broke. Um, has baby been moving the same? I'm like, no, he's had limited movements, but... Obviously, I think thought that was when you're going into labour, they don't move as much. I don't know. I just I've had kids, but that's what I always thought they like stiffen up because they're coming through, preparing. So um, there's like yeah, you need to come in straight away, so and so forth. So I was like oh okay. So I just like to Aaron, oh I'm gonna run to the hospital. Do you want to stay at the fun fair with the kids or and walk home or should I drop you home? Um, because I had to go home anyway to get my notes and my hospital bag. No, did I get my hospital bag? No, I didn't get my hospital bags because I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, oh, they're going to just check. Um, So I'm in there, they're like, oh, no, your waters haven't broke. But we're worried that with the limited movements from baby, because obviously um, that's the main concern at the end of pregnancy. And I've never had any limited movements before through pregnancy. So I was like, okay, like this is all new. Um, then I had a doctor come and they was like, would you like us to break your waters now? Um, or would you like us to give you, I think it's called a sweep, where they like go round the baby's head and your cervix and like try and stretch it and push the baby back so he pushes down and starts your labour. Um, and I was just like, I wanted to get my waters broke, but I was like, be responsible. Aaron is not going to be able to pack the kids' clothes pack their computers and not forget anything and not be flustered and not worry about getting to the hospital without do you know what I mean he's just it's just it doesn't make sense the kids are at home let me get a sweep because if I get a sweep I can leave the hospital 
But if I get my waters broke, I have to be took into delivery suite. You okay? You having a stretch? He's sleeping, but he's stretching. He's He'll be waking up soon. He's still in his pajamas. We are getting ready to go out. Um. So, where was I? Yeah, so I was like, okay, so I've got a sweet, um, horrible, the most horrible thing. Like, I was like, does my baby have hair? And she was like, he does. So that's how in depth it is to get that. Like, it is full on. Um, so yeah, and then, oh, one second, guys. Sorry, guys. Also, Aaron's not here because he went on a jog earlier and then he went gym with his friend. So I will actually put a clip in of him maybe explaining labour to him, to you guys in his context. But yeah, so got a sweet, that's what it's called. I'm sure it's what it's called, a sweet. Anyway, left, packed up the boys' stuff, took the boys and my sister to my mum's house. We drove down there because we was like, we might as well, like, I'm not contracting yet. Just didn't think nothing of it. Um, and then they said, if I get a sweet, I'll come back in at 11 o'clock. Um, you okay? Oh, you okay? Yeah, so took the kids to my mum's. Um, we got back kind of late because we, dro we dropped them there like after nine. She was like, we don't want to take them straight away because my mum, we only had them two days, like hit them and my sisters back for two days and then obviously we're br bringing them back. So yeah, anyway, meant to be at the hospital for 11. But if there's really limited movements, they just said call up and come in. So about 8.30 when I woke up, Obviously, I hadn't slept much because I was trying to make sure he's moving. And I just called him and I was like, his movements haven't really changed. They was like, okay, come in now. So I was like to Aaron, because um, you have to go triage and you have to be like, um, you have to go through a process before you be put in delivery, which Aaron's not allowed in the hospital until you move to a ward or you move to de the delivery suite. Um, so I was like, Aaron, I'm going to go. You just sleep and then... When you're allowed at the hospital, I will call you to come to the hospital. And then, because the hospital is so close, so I was like, you can just walk to the hospital. Um, and I'll drive down, whatever. So I got to the hospital for nine o'clock. And then I was put on the monitor for so long. Then I got moved to a ward because there was two people in front of me to get their waters broke. So they needed to be put on delivery suite first. Yep. Great, so we're sitting, then I get put on a ward. Um, no, I, I get put on, deliver, I get put in the birthing suite, like a room there that I can just, you know, chill. So then, obviously I call Aaron, Aaron comes up, brings me some food, whatever. We are there in that room from, and I keep being put on the monitor, but we're there in that room from, I was in there before 11 until six at night. My waters hadn't been broken, nothing. It just didn't make sense. So I was just like, can I just go home at this point? Cause I'm not being monitored. I'm being monitored every six hours or whatever. So why am I still here? Oh my God, look, I got white under my arm, just the deodorant. Anyway, we go to, and, and he's doing fine on the monitor when he was on the monitor in that room. So anyway, we, by like six o'clock, I think it was, we get put down to um, delivery suite and Aaron's mum's there at this point. And then baby wants to start. Oh my God. I don't know what he was doing, but he was like, he had really increased heart rates, but he wasn't spiking down. So they was worried that he like, he was no, or he was spiking, but down and it should have been, so his heart rate stayed at 160 and started spiking down where it should have stayed at 140 and spiked up to 160. So they was worried. So we couldn't, I couldn't have my waters broke because 
I couldn't have my waters broke because he was too high. And then he went down to 140 and just sat there. So they thought he was sleeping, but to make sure, because he wasn't having no spikes up, we had to wait. It was a whole process. Then by like 10 past nine, I got my waters broke. Four hours of little contractions, but nothing big. And they're coming once every 10 minutes, once every 10 minutes. So I had to then be put on um, hormones, which the oh, I should have. I should have listened, guys. The woman sat me down and she said, listen, you're going to be put on hormones and we need to have this conversation. She was like, because this is really intense, really fast. And, you know, we want to talk to you about an epidural. And I'm like, oh, if it comes to me I, and I need it, but I don't think I need it. I've had two kids, never had an epidural before. This and that. Ugh. Confidence, high. Be put on this trip at one o'clock in the morning. Guys. These contractions was coming through every 90 seconds. They was lasting, I think, 90 seconds. It was intense. It was so bad. But at first, it was like, I can live with it. But then baby started spiking. I got high. I started getting high blood pressure. Um, and my pulse and stuff was high, which indicated then I had an infection. But I'm just... I just remember just dragging myself around this room and and just Aaron just in utter shock and Aaron was just worried for hours and then I was like okay I need pethidin because they said do you want epidural and I was like how long is the epidural gonna take they're like the man's not gonna be here for half an hour so I was like uh-uh give me pethidin I don't need an epidural I need it now so gave me pethidin um and that didn't work it made me so drowsy, guys. And I'm like, doped out, but I'm still in pain. But I can't scream for the pain that I'm in because I'm so drowsy. So I just feel like it was horrible. And then I just remember like this brutal labor. I'm in the shower at one point because I didn't have a bath in my room because I had to keep the monitors on me and I could not move and I can't get the gas in air. And Aaron is just rubbing my back, bless him. I just feel sorry for him at this point because he is in utter shock and just worried and asking the doctor so many questions to worry about my pain i'm in the shower can't move they're asking they're saying i need to get back on the bed because the heart baby's heart rate is deteriorating basically and going up and they can't monitor it properly because the monitor keeps moving so i've tried to get back in the bed guys then i started bleeding everywhere so aaron i just i can't see properly and all I can see is Aaron's feet. Every time I'm looking for Aaron, I just see his feet. And he's just saying, check her. She's bleeding. She's bleeding. She's bleeding. Like, I just remember her. Is she okay? She's bleeding. He honestly thought I was going to die. Like, he even says now, like, he thought I was going to die. Like, he, he will literally cry about it. It was that bad. And then by, like, six in the morning, I was like, cool, epidural. So we had epidural. And I was still, I think, high off the pethidin. So now I have to sit up. Oh, I've knocked the camera. I had to sit up like this in the, in the bed. So my legs was down. Like they, they put the head of the bed up and then the legs of the bed down. So I'm literally sitting in the bed like I'm on a chair. I've been strapped to this monitor for like 11 hours. And I just, I'm just drowsy. And I remember keep coming out of this drowse and I've got like, five six doctors in my room guys and they're trying to talk to me and they're trying to keep me awake because they need to explain to me what is happening and obviously I'm doped out so I'm just there like monging out and they're like we really need to like get consent and stuff because we're gonna want to take you we might have to take you for a c-section this time it's like they're threatening it but it's not the biggest thing in the room but they're just they keep talking about it so it in my head, I was like, yeah, the way this labor's gone, it's not gone my way at all. I'm going to have to have a C-section. So we're there. And then they come back in the room. They're like, yeah, you have an infection. Um, we're not too sure what the infection is. Also, baby's really unhappy. Um, we need you to go for a C-section and we're going to prepare for it now. You'll be in there in 20 minutes. So... 
these times they're telling me this while Aaron has gone downstairs to the car to put um a new ticket on the car like to pay for parking because your girl got a ticket so i'm upstairs crying like i've got to have a c-section i'm trying not to cry aaron you can see he's getting emotional because that's the one thing he said he don't want me to have to have c-section because he was so scared of it so they've come in they've gave him clothes for a c-section they've took the epidural out of my back no they didn't actually they did that in the theater so anyway They've took me, they dragged me out of the room. It was just all go, go, go. They've left Aaron in the room. Aaron said, yeah, all I remember is when they took you for the, um, he said, when they took you out for the C-section, I was sitting there with the gas in there, just like, <sighs> he was just puffing away for, must have been a good half an hour, just puffing away on gas in there, he said, because he was so worried. Anyway, take me to the, the theatre. And they also said, we're going to see when we get there, if you can fragilely push him out before we cut you open. So they ask you to sit. Let me show you. Let me try to push you back. So you've got to sit. You've got to sit on the operating table. And I've got to sit like this, hunched over. So they've given me, I think, a pillar there. And I'm hunched over like this. So they can take out the epidural and then they can put the other thing in your spine to so you don't feel nothing. Guys, why am I hunched over for like half an hour like this? Just like this. And I'm not allowed to move. And he keeps poking me in the back. Poke me in the back. And it's the wrong place. Poke me in the back. I, I think water's supposed to come out of my spine or something. Tension. And it's not. So I'm just getting... I've got like seven stab marks in my back. This is going on now for, this is going on for like half an hour. So I've, I've said, wait, like, cause they've now got like a machine to try and find the right spot. I don't know what was going on, but they've got a machine to try and find the spot. So I'm like, oh my God. I, so I've asked him like, what's the other option after this? Because if you can't find it and I'm just sitting here, like what, what's next? He says, oh, we have to put you to sleep which that to me is really just not an option that I wanted because I want to hold my baby. I want to see my baby. I want to make sure Aaron's okay because at this point he's not doing great. Um, and I don't want to be put asleep. Like I'm already going to be numbed. Anyway, they managed to do it. They managed to numb me. So as soon as they numb you, they grab you because they say like you lose your, your weight of your legs and stuff. So they grab you. They just fling you back. Guys, this is so traumatic. Like I just never thought... Because cesarean just never popped up in my head. So they just fling you back. They f you see your legs, but you cannot feel your legs. Anyway, so they fling me back. They're like, all, all come prepped. And then the woman's there. She looks up and she's like, no, she can push. She can push him out. His head's there. His head's there. So they're saying to me, on the next contraction, I'm really getting loud. On the next contraction, push. I'm saying I'm numb from my breast down. I can't feel a contraction. So they're like, we're going to tell you when you have a contraction and you have to push. But push, how do you push into your core, basically, without not feeling anything? But I know I don't want to get cut open. So I'm, when they say push, I push. When they say pant, when they say stop, I stopped. All I remember is push pushed like my life depended on it like they told me stop pushing like they didn't have to i didn't have to take a breath and push again no i pushed like my life depended on it on the operating table this is guys with all the lights and oh it was horrible so then obviously they cut me pushed got four steps but obviously i kept pushing they said pant 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 got him out and i remember them throwing him on me but I could barely feel anything. Like, I could only feel my hands, but they was even tingly. Um, and, yeah, he was amazing. And Aaron's there, like, oh, my God, he's got a full head of hair. He's got big feet. Like, we were just so happy that I didn't have to have this, the C-section, obviously, even though it was still traumatic. And I'm still numb from a C-section, which I didn't have, but didn't have to have it. Um couple stitches and then we just I remember us just going back to the room and I'm just there numb I can't move I'm just sitting up but my body can't move 
and yeah we had him and then we had to stay in hospital for the night because obviously i had high blood pressure they wanted to check he was okay that was a horrible night guys and then he and he was latching and everything it was great then they discharged him but they didn't want to discharge me but I was just like, as soon as they discharge him, I'm discharging myself. Because I'm not staying in this hospital with this baby one more night. So we discharged ourselves and went home. But I had him on the 8th. I don't know if I added all them dates. Because I've been talking and I really don't know. But yeah, I am going to put some clips in somewhere. Um, but let's introduce you to him, even though he's asleep. But we have to wake up and get him ready. Because he needs a bottle before we go out anyway. So we're going to go down to the shops today. Baby. He's not prepared for this video, if I'll be honest, because he's still in his pyjamas. Because we had the health visitors come today twice because he has a bit of jaundice from... Hello. Guys. This is... Oh. This is baby Ovid. Can you say Hello. And this is his full head of hair. <gasps> Good boy. We was trying to get that one earlier for ages. And you only give us little one. Ooh. This is his big hands. You see how long his fingers are, guys. This is little baby Ovi. Let me show you his feet. He got his heel pricked today as well. And this is his long foot. All I remember seeing when they like, put him on me is his long feet and his long, like his big feet and his big hands. And I was like, he's got loads of hair and big feet and big hands. But his colour's starting to come in now. Baby, should we wake up? No? Hello? Hello? Are you going to open your eyes? Are you going to open your eyes for the world? Oh, you're looking for food already. Are you going to open your eyes? No? 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 Are you going to open your eyes for us? Are you going to open your eyes? Are you going to open your eyes? Oh. Oh. Oh, he wants food, guys. But yeah, this is Ovid Wild Wickham. Yes. And that's Daddy chose that whole name. Yes. Yes, basically. I uh, Ovid is um, Aaron's dad's name. So we thought we'd take Aaron's dad's name. Because, um, see, Aaron's dad played a big, big part in Aaron's life. So... I thought it'd be nice as it's Aaron's firstborn. And then, um, obviously, we was going to go with Wickham. And then I remember we were saying something and we didn't have a middle name. And I was just like, wild, because obviously Aaron's music name is wild, whatever. And um, Aaron went with it. And then we just went with it because we were just like, Ovid, wild Wickham. It just goes so well. Yes. Yes. Yes, it does. So, welcome uh, the new addition to our YouTube channel. I haven't vlogged this week, guys. It is Friday. I had him Sunday. So, I'm going to start a fresh vlog Monday. So, this will go out on Sunday. Then Monday, I will actually pray, try to be vlogging Monday through like I usually do. And then we'll be back on routine. But this week has been crazy because my body, I was breastfeeding and then I stopped and then just my body is healing in just so different than it did last time. So I didn't expect, obviously, it to be so traumatic. So that's why um, we've, we haven't vlogged and we didn't get a labour vlog. Did we? Did we? No, my baby. But yeah, anyway, guys, we're going to go. Bye. Please follow, like, and subscribe. No. Please, yeah, I don't know, guys. Your girl's rusty.
and we got to get him a bottle. So I need to go get him changed, feed, fed, and out the house because we need to get in the car. So we, mm, my baby. Bye, guys. We'll see you on the next vlog. <laughs> yes, we will. So guys, I'm actually in the induction suite. <sighs> this is my little bathroom. Toilet's over there. I am getting, hopefully my waters are going to get broken. I'm not going to have to go on the induction. I'm not going to have to have the thing, the balloon thing. But um, two people are in front of me to get their waters broke. So I can't get on delivery suite right now. So as soon as there's a bed, so they're gonna monitor me. And then once a bed comes available, they're gonna take me down to delivery suite and then hopefully pop my waters. Um, because I don't want the balloon thing because I've passed that stage. Like I'm already so many centimeters and that's a long process. So yeah, Aaron can't come yet, but he'll be here soon. I'm just gonna lay down and chill out on my phone. Guys, so my stretch marks have really come through now. Can you see that? Because I've never been this big through pregnancy before. My belly button's starting to come out. So. Thank you, baby. I'm actually very over this process at this point. I'm still waiting to go to the delivery to get my water broke, but they keep having emergencies. So even though I can't go home, I'm still, I'm not priority, even though I'm priority, it's just this. It's annoying. I wanna go, I wanna go home. And then he's going to get his mum, but I, they said we're allowed to, I'm allowed two delivery partners in delivery, I think, but I don't know if I'm allowed them in this room, so we've got that, that hurdle to deal with as well, so I don't know what's going to happen, but just a waiting game, so yeah, I actually can't believe I've got that many stretch marks on my stomach. The first baby to give me stretch marks on my stomach. I wonder what they're going to look like after. Uh, I mean, I've got stretch marks on the sides, my bar everywhere, but not my stomach. So days of belly tops are over, I guess. I never really wore belly tops like that, but yeah. It's over for me. It's over for me. But yeah, I want to go home, guys. This process is long. And like, all they have to do is break my waters. But they won't break my waters up here because they said basically they're worried that if they break my waters it will speed up too quick so i need to be on delivery in delivery suite before they break my waters so i've been here since nine o'clock and it's now 2 30 and i haven't had my waters broke so okay Thank you. <laughs> Are you okay with the and neurofen or something? Yeah. Yeah. Can't feel my feet. They're coming back. They're done. Hey guys, so he is here. We he are safe. That was a long three days, basically. And He's finally here, safe and sound. But I'm gonna have to give you story time because we did not get to record a lot because it was a whirlwind. Look at his little mouth open. Um, but yeah, I'll give you a sit down story time in this video. But he's here, he's long. My boy's here, fluffy. He just fed his second feed. 
breastfeed him. He's a hard, it's hard for him to latch, but yeah. I'm just waiting for Aaron and his mum to come to get some food. Got my arms plugged up. Hopefully we get to go home tomorrow. The only good thing is, is they're helping me with the latching and breastfeeding, so positive. But I'm exhausted, guys. And let me give you a story time on my home. I'm tired.